So are you running any GTK apps? And you probably are, but you're not using GNOME or some other desktop environment that comes with tweak tools, but you wanna change your GTK theme. So today we're gonna to take a look at a program called LX Appearance, which will let you do just that through a graphical interface. But if you stick around to the end, I'm gonna show you how to do it just through the config file. So if you're new to this channel, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. I'm aiming for a thousand subs and any help will be really appreciated. So now that's out of the way, let's get started. Good afternoon everyone and welcome back to the channel. So the first thing we're going to do is actually get LX Appearance installed. So this is very simple. It's just available in the main repos on Arch. You can probably install it on other distros for the main repos as well. I'm not sure. On Arch you just do it like this though. So sudo pacman s LX Appearance. If we can spell it correct, that's not how you spell appearance. There is an A there. And this is what the program is. It's very small so just download it and it'll take a couple of seconds. So I'll open it up and you can actually see what my current GTK theme is. Cause I don't think I've shown any GTK apps in a video since I've changed it. That, what am I doing? That's not even remotely what I'm trying to open. LX appearance. There we go. Okay, so I'm currently running Adway to Dark and my icon theme is Breeze Dark. So what's a good example? Actually, there is one here actually. So the NM applet, this is a GTK program. So if you look up here, it looks kind of nice, but there is a much better example than this. So if I bring up PC Man FM, my current file manager, we can see what it looks like. So this is what it currently looks like. I don't really care too much about what file manager I'm running. So I just picked this one and it looks what you would expect it to look like with this theme. So. Yeah, there's nothing too special there. Another example I have is GIMP, which is obviously like the big GTK program, being that GTK is the, at least at some point, I don't know if it's still called that, the GIMP toolkit. So this is what this looks like with my current theme. It looks nice, I like it. These icons down here are a little small, so I might try to find some way to deal with that, but for now, it's fine as it is. So we'll quit out of that. And Basically what this will let you do is just set your theme. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is actually download some themes because if you're on Arch, for example, and you're not in a desktop environment, you're not gonna have any themes. So luckily on the Arch Linux wiki, there is a list of themes that have already been packaged up. So for the package that has the theme that I'm currently running, that'll come from Gnome Extra Themes, but I've also got the Arc package downloaded as well. So if you like my theme, download the GNOME Extra themes, or if you wanna use any of the other ones, go right ahead. It doesn't really matter what theme you wanna use. So I don't know if this is all the themes that have been packaged up because there are some AUR ones and some main repo ones, but if there are other themes you do want to install, then you can actually do it in another way. So you can go and download a theme from like the GNOME theme, whatever whatever that store is called, where you can download things, or just any way that you can find GTK themes. And then you can put them directly into these folders. So the home directory in the .themes folder, or .local slash share slash themes. So I don't have any special themes, but I don't think that these folders get created by default or anything. No, they don't. So you're gonna have to create the folders yourself and then just drop whatever theme you want in there and that will work perfectly fine. Okay, so let's say we want this GNOME Extra Themes like I'm running right now, or GNOME Themes Extra. So we'll just download that. I've already got it installed obviously, but I'll just do it on camera for the sake of the video. Pac-Man, yep, okay, cool. And obviously it's gonna ask me to reinstall it and there we go. So now that we've got some themes to work with, we can actually start selecting which one we want to use. So let's say we want to use Ad Waiter. So this is a very light theme. So if we apply this now and bring PC Man FM back up, sometimes the themes don't change properly. And I'm not entirely sure why. Let's try that again. I did have an instance of PC Man FM still open. So no, that's not going to change. Let's try changing it to Arc then. And yeah, okay, it'll change now. I don't know why it doesn't always change. Because if we change it to something else now, it should work. So let's go high contrast, which looks absolutely horrendous. And we'll notice that it changes now. So I don't know what's going on with some of the themes. Maybe it might just be a problem with AdWaiter. I don't know. Maybe it actually is an LX appearance problem. But let's select a different appearance. So I'm going to go back to the appearance that I actually like. 
I'm also kind of a fan of Arc Dark, but we're going to run Add Way to Dark. So apply that, and now we are back to the theme that we had on before. Okay, so the next thing in here is the colors, but LX Appearance is kind of a program from the LXDE desktop environment, or LX desktop environment, I guess that was kind of redundant. So you need to actually have an LX session to actually run this, but I don't have one because I'm not using LXDE, but if you want to get that set up for yourself, then you can actually start modifying some of these colors. But for me, I like this theme as it is, so I don't really worry about it. So the next thing that we have is our icon theme. So those are just these little icons in here. So I've got a couple installed here. Typically they will come with whatever themes that you install, but you can also install icons separately. Okay, by my brief search, it looks like they are just included with your theme. So presumably you'll just put them in the same place. So we've got a couple of icon themes installed. I've got Add Waiter, which is, it's not a bad one. I'll quit out of this, reopen it. It doesn't look too bad. I'm not a big fan of it with this actual background theme though. I've also got Breeze and Breeze Dark. So the difference between Breeze and Breeze Dark seems to be these little like pluses and stuff like that. So if you notice down there, you can actually see it when it's on Breeze Dark, but you can't see it when it's on Breeze. So I assume that it must be a dark gray or black if it's just on the regular theme. And the other option that I have is high contrast. So obviously you're gonna have different themes installed. So select whichever one you're a fan of and then just apply that and then quit out of whatever GTK app you have, open it back up and the theme should be applied. Okay, so next we have our mouse cursors. Once again, these also come with your themes. So we've got add waiter, which is what I'm running. Breeze and Breeze Light. So it says down here that not all desktop applications will let it change on the fly. I know that when I was running i3, I couldn't actually change them on the fly, but it seems that with BSPWM, it's gonna let me. So I am quite a fan of the just normal looking mouse cursor like this, but you can use whatever you want and apply whatever you feel like. So if we quit out of that now, because this is actually changing it for my overall system, I don't actually need to quit, but but if it's not changing it, then you're probably gonna have to quit or maybe do like a quit of your Xorg server and then restart that back up. So next we have some font settings. So you can enable and disable anti-aliasing. I'm just gonna disable that and see what effect that really has. It doesn't look too noticeable, but I'm just gonna leave it on. I'm not sure what font hinting is. I'm not a big font guy, so if someone knows what font hinting is and can tell me what that does, let me know. There's also this sub-pixel geometry. I, that's another thing that is way out of my ballpark, so I have no idea about that one either. Okay, and next up we have Other. So Other lets you do things like your toolbar style, so you can have, let's say, icons only. What is that gonna do exactly? So we quit that and come back in. Did that do anything? Text above icons, let's have a look. I don't know if that's doing anything. Maybe this program doesn't actually have any examples of that. If we do text only, what's that gonna do? I don't know if that's really doing anything. Maybe GIMP will have some example of that, I'm not sure. Obviously some of this stuff is gonna depend on the program that you're running. Yeah, it doesn't look like it's done anything really, so I guess that's just something that I don't really have access to with my current programs that I'm using. So you can also change the toolbar icons. Uh, I don't, I think that actually has to do with like a proper like toolbar thing that you would have on your system, like a status bar maybe, I don't know. Then you can have show images on buttons. What does that do if we disable that? Let's see. Once again, not entirely sure. Yeah, I, I don't know. And show images in menus. Once again, I'm not sure about that one. So all of this stuff you can obviously play around with. You can disable sounds and I'm gonna do that. I don't know why I had it enabled, so we'll disable those. Cause I guess some programs are gonna have sounds when you do certain things. That sounds in incredibly annoying, so I'm just gonna disable it. And also some GTK apps also have accessibility features, so you can enable and disable that in here. Okay, so that's pretty much everything for LX Appearance. So the next thing that we can actually do is modify it straight from the config file. I'm not a big fan of this method for two reasons. One, basically, when you're modifying a theme, you kind of want to know what it looks like. So it's probably best to have some graphical example. This is one of those situations where I don't think a terminal app is the best way to modify something. 
and basically the other reason is I've ha I also had trouble actually getting the changes to work because with the graphical editor you know exactly what each of the themes are going to be called and you know what all of the settings are and just it makes it a bit easier when you're modifying it like that but when you're doing it from the terminal through just modifying the config then you don't know what each of the settings are without actually having to go over to the say Arch Linux wiki where it does have everything listed out. It does have an example in here as well. If we can find it. Examples. Okay. There are these examples for your GTK2 themes and GTK3 themes. So I would recommend just copying this and pasting it directly into the folder that I'm going to show you and then just working from it from there because if you try to work out what these are by yourself then you're not going to work it out so just copy these in and go from there if you use lx appearance it's going to make these files for you though so there's no hassle there so i've rambled on long enough let's actually get to the point that i was going to show you so in your .config folder you will probably have two folders called gtk-2 and gtk-3 so you might not have these, but if you don't, then just make them. I've got them because I have used some file managers that have had like bookmarks and stuff like that. But if you don't have them, then just make them with the exact same name that's here. And for the GTK2 theme, you want to name the file .gtk2rc-2.0. So this file is being modified by LX Appearance, so it'll have this note up here. But obviously, if you've modified it yourself, you're not going to have that note. And then for the GTK3, you want to just call this settings.ini. So we'll go with the GTK2 first because, I don't know, that's the first one, I guess. Okay, so the way that you modify this is the exact same way that you would modify it within LX Appearance. So if we bring LX Appearance back open, so we'll notice that this is called add way to dark. So if we wanted to just change it to arc, for example, presumably if we just modify, actually no, I don't have any GTK2 themes installed, so I can't show you like that. But if we had changed this to arc and then opened up, say, PC Man FM, but the GTK2 version, that would then show us a different theme. So you can obviously just change all of these as it is. Look at the example and go from there because it'll make it so much easier. So we can go over to the GTK3 one now. And this time, let's actually change it to something. So this settings file is in a bit of a different format. It's very similar to like a MIME application if you ever worked with those. But if you haven't, then just look at the syntax that is on here, copy it in, work from there. It'll save you a bunch of times. So let's say we want to change this over to arc, for example. Now, I don't know whether this will actually change it properly or if I'm going to have to like do a reboot or something like that because I don't know if there's a configuration you have to like reload. So if we open something now, okay, no, it'll just change perfectly fine. So this is now the arc theme. And if we change this back to add way to dark, then we can just reopen PC Man FM. And now we can see it's a different theme. So if this is how you would prefer to edit it, go right ahead. I know that within some desktop environments though, you might actually have some issues with this because on the Arch Wiki, it did mention that GNOME actually has problems if you try to directly edit the settings file. So your experience will vary depending on your system. But if you're just running a desktop environment like I am, then it's going to be no hassle whatsoever. So I think that is pretty much everything for this video. So if you liked this video, remember to smash that like button and leave me a comment down below to let me know what you think. I didn't realize that you could actually see the wheels on the side of my microphone until just now. I'm not re-recording that entire video, so you guys can deal with it. You probably didn't even notice until just now anyway when I pointed it out. So if you want to see new videos when they come out, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. I hope the room's not too echoey because I'm moving and there's basically no stuff in here anymore. So hopefully it turned out pretty good. So if you want to see my videos on a platform that isn't YouTube, go check out my library. That'll be down below. And if you want to chat with me, my Discord is also down below. Also down there will be my support link. So if you want to like give me some crypto or you want to donate to my Patreon or you want to donate to me on PayPal, go right ahead and do that. And don't feel pressured to actually do that though because all my videos will remain available for free. But if you do want to give me some money, go right ahead. Also down below, I've got my Twitter and my Mastodon. So if you want to get video updates, go there and you'll actually get video updates on time. Up on that corner, I've got the playlist there's videos in. So go check that out if you want to see other videos like this. And I think that's pretty much everything for me now. So I'm out.